what could you tell us behind the scenes what's going on? I've, I've read all your work. Uh, what, uh, what, what, is there anything, I don't even know what question to ask. It's kind of exciting having someone, the person who's helping write. What, what was your role? Were you kind of proofreading them or just giving your input? What was going on there? No, no I was an author from 2006 until uh, 2009. So I was working uh, L1s and, mm -hmm. um, and EB1Cs primarily. First, and L1As and L1Bs. There's a massive backlog when I came on. Um, <clears throat> I think some of the appeals have been sitting there for three or four years wow. um, that I was working. Um, it was very difficult, uh, even after I became a supervisor and an editor in 2009, to sustain an appeal as an as an adjudicator at the AO. It was uh, it, it was just always you know sort of swing, swimming against a current. I guess you just felt like you were pushing up against uh, a resistant um, uh, policy. Uh, and the reason why was there was concern that whenever one uh, sustained sustained an appeal, that the facts and the justification would be misused by you, right? Someone who reads them <laughs> and <laughs> shares them. And, you know, the, the idea I had at the time as an editor was, you know, why don't we just sustain appeals without any explanation. Just, just do a, you know, just, yeah. just overturn it and don't explain it. Because I saw a lot of cases as a writer and an editor that I felt should be reversed, right? They should be, the, the, or the, the, the denial was not appropriate for a variety of yeah. reasons. And um, just inst the institution didn't like that. Um, I do believe they preserve that. They've adopted that. I think it's a little easier to get a case to the AO than it was, say, in 2006 or 2007 when I started. Um, but back then, even then, the AO was on the was a tip of the spear when it came to telework. It was one of the first U.S. government agencies or offices to permit telework, even back during the INS days. Mm -hmm. People with the AO or the AAU or whenever change names yeah. were able to work from home. And then uh, when I started, it was a big part of the culture and their recruiting strategy. So they were way ahead of the rest of the U.S. government and the rest of USCIS on telework. But it's still a big part of their culture.